but it doesn't know that it's doing it. You know, everybody thinks, oh, the baby loves me, but <laughs> the baby's not got a clue what's going on, which is also why babies can't actually choose to let go. And you've got to really prize yourself out of that, that grasp because they're very strong, these reflexes. They're survival mechanisms. So that should really be inhibited in that first six to 12 months. If it hasn't been, then it continually stays active and that can interfere with future development moving forward. So this example means that the child's development of fine motor skills to learn to do things like brush their teeth, put their clothes on, tie their shoelaces, control a pencil or a paintbrush or a crayon, become much more limited for these kids. So if you address the underlying physical barrier, you free up and open up the access to these kids to move on in their life. And can you remove that reflex? It's not so much removing it, it's inhibiting it so that you and I both have our primitive reflexes in our central nervous system. They're just dormant. They're just not active at all because they've been superseded because of experience, good genetics, hopefully. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> good lifestyle or, or whatever. So we've got much more control over ourselves. We've got voluntary control over what we do. Those who have a, a cluster of primitive reflexes, that's involuntary control. So it'll just fire up whenever it decides it needs to rather than because you want it to. And that's the difference. So when you're testing a three or four year old, is there certain reflexes that you look for? Is there, is there a group of five telltale reflexes? I mean, there's 14 primitive reflexes that you can test once uh, a child is born uh, and stuff. There is something called a gag reflex as well, which is when babies can be born in water because they automatically know how to hold their breath. Uh, but I don't test for that. Um, uh, f there's no reason You've for me no to swimming test pool. for that. No swimming pool uh. in the clinic. That's what it is. Yeah, no hydrotherapy. Not where I live. But certainly those 14 reflexes are a whole bunch of reflexes that can be tactile, so stimulated by touch, ones that are balance driven, and ones that are tonic neck. So wherever the position the head is in, what does the body do in response, for example? So those 14 reflexes you can test very specifically. And again, it was Peter Blythe and, and a colleague called David McLone who came up with the testing procedures for this based on past research from many, many decades ago. Um, and they've just really pieced it all together to, to what we now know as the IMPP method. Wow. Um, so the curriculum for excellence was introduced uh, <laughs> uh, was introduced in Scotland, I think it was 2010. Um, and it was meant to be once in a generation um, change in how children are educated. Um, and it's about the whole child education concept. So it's abso absolutely fantastic. I was doing a bit of research last night and one of the core principles is health and wellbeing. <laughs> so what's your thoughts? I mean, first of all, Scotland needs to be pretty proud of itself because to my knowledge, we are the first country in the world that has health and wellbeing as a curriculum area, which I think is really is that, significant is that right? and yeah. really huge. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that health and well-being needs to be on the curriculum, probably more so post-pandemic than pre-pandemic, um, although I think there's arguments that it should be there regardless. I think health and well-being has become a really important area 